Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well this vlog was instigated when I watched Caleb Dressel uh, do a phenomenal 50 yard swim on the internet. Um, Caleb Dressel is a top 50 meter 100 meter swimmer, he's one of the fastest people in the world. And it was an analysis of that that sort of set me thinking because he did 17.63 seconds for 50 yards which is about 45 meters that's phenomenally fast and I watched an analysis and the analyzer said in eventually in his first length he did eight strokes and his second length he did nine and I thought to mean I thought to myself so what I don't understand what that's meant to mean to me so I did my own analysis on the race and he was doing an average of about 125 strokes a minute now I've been doing some analysis with some swimmers that I have um, trying to get to nationals. One's a short distance and one's a longer distance swimmer. And we've been trying to get the shorter distance swimmer to go at 110 strokes plus uh, a minute on a 50 meter swim. Now initially he found that he was slipping his stroke um, at 110 strokes a minute. And he said to me, well, yeah, I'm slipping my stroke. I said, well, so what? So what does it matter if you're slipping your stroke? Because you're still going faster. And that really is the point. You can slip your stroke and go faster. Therefore, perhaps you should increase your stroke rate um, in triathlon to actually go faster and perhaps not use any more effort. You've got to check that out. So let's go to the computer and have a look at some 1500 meter swimmers and, and just then come back and discuss it further. This is just after the start of the second heat of the 1500 metres in the English National Championships. And we're just going to take a look at the stroke rate of lane four Elijah Kendrick here um, initially. And we'll take a look at others as we go on. Um, so we'll just take his stroke rate. And we've got that at 111 initially. We'll just take it as he slows down a bit. And there we have 95. So he's now at 95 strokes a minute. So that's fairly fast stroking. If you see next to him, uh, Bailey Ward is also fast stroking. We'll take his uh, stroke rate after the turn. We're now past the turn and we're going to take a look at Bailey Ward and Aaron Lally and see what their strokes are um, as this first hundred starts to unfold. We'll take Bailey click. One, two, three. Bailey's got 92 strokes a minute and Aaron will go click three and he's got 72 strokes a minute. Remember this is the first hundred. Generally just like a triathlon the first hundred is faster than you'll normally see so we'll go further ahead and check what happens there. We're nearly halfway through the race right now so we're going to take Elijah's stroke right now. Click one two, three. He's still stroking high at a well above 95 strokes a minute. Now we'll take Aaron's. Click one, two, three. Much slower stroke rate at 86. And finally we'll take Bailey's as click one, two, three. And we've got 91 strokes a minute. So with this we're going to concentrate on Elijah and Aaron. Now when Elijah strokes, the front end of his stroke, and if I expand that a little bit, you'll see better. It's reasonably well extended. He dropped his elbow a touch there instead of getting a really good catch and then drives through and extends his arm. But his arm comes out actually quite bent and it'll be interesting to see what sort of angle that makes with his body. So we'll go up and then along and we've got 137 degrees. So you can see he's still keeping his elbow bent so he's actually coming out quite close to his waist um, as opposed to any further down um, close to his thigh. We'll just clear that off. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. We'll pull the whole thing down. And we've just about caught Aaron at his full extension there. So once again, let's measure the angle that that arm is at. And we've got 147. So there's a big difference in terms of how far they're pushing, pushing back with their arms and therefore there's a big difference in their stroke length and you can see that as each one strokes and at the front end Aaron doesn't quite drop his elbow he gets into the catch and then drives through and you can see at the back end now we'll just expand this a little bit 
So you can see at the front end he's not dropping his elbow and then drives through all the way basically to his thigh. So we've got a much longer stroke with Aaron than we have with Elijah. And that's how Elijah manages to increase his stroke rate. But notice Elijah's actually ahead of Aaron at this point in the race. Coming towards the end of the race, uh, we have uh, Aaron and a person called Owen Webster um, in lane two who have actually broken away uh, from Elijah there. Now, we'll just take um, Owen's stroke rate. Click, one, two, three, and we've got 93 strokes a minute. And from Aaron, it's click, one, two, three, and his raised his stroke rate to 83. So they're both stroking quite highly, um, but they've broken... Elijah, um, probably from increasing his stroke rate. And there we go. He comes in first and second. And here comes Elijah in third. So that high stroke rate actually worked for all of them towards the end. In fact, um, it, Aaron broke away from Elijah towards the end. And Owen obviously, obviously was there all the time. He was just out of our frame. So as I say, we've been doing some analysis with those couple of swimmers. And... The swimmer that we talked about before that had 110 strokes a minute initially had problems in holding that stroke rate. He was slipping the water. But we just did an, a further analysis um, and we tried to increase him um, beyond 110 because at 110 he's now become quite comfortable and very powerful. And that, that's what tends to happen. As you increase your stroke rate, um, you do become more used to that stroke rate even if you shorten your stroke length, which is what we've seen happens as you increase your stroke rate. Now for the longer distance swimmer, she was trying to, she's quite young, she was trying to get under 4 minutes 50 for 400 metres. She hasn't been able to do that before, long course we're talking about, so that's 50 yard pole. And we worked out that at 87 strokes a minute, she actually would be doing the pace necessary to beat that time. In fact, at 87 strokes a minute, we worked out through doing tests that she should really come in at about 4.46. So that really re-emphasised that you have to work to a stroke rate. We, we literally tried different stroke rates and she never hit the time until she got to 87. If we went above 87, it was just too hard to hold or she started slipping the water and losing pace. Now, eventually, she might just grow into that pace. But it just re-emphasised to me that stroke rate is so important when you're actually looking to do well in any sort of swimming competition. Now, to control stroke rate, we'll be using these. These are Finnis Tempo Trainers. And you just set these to a particular stroke rate and practice at that stroke rate. But you can't immediately go to a very high stroke rate. You need to take your stroke rate as is today and then increase that by five strokes a minute. If you, if you increase that by five strokes a minute and do a few 50 meter swims, you'll slowly but surely get used to that stroke rate. Then try five strokes more. When you can't hold that, then obviously you've got to back off and just practice at the one that you could hold. When you get used to something, then you can try and move ahead and increase your stroke rate again. Now you saw in that 1500 meter swim that there are different stroke rates for different parts of a race. And I would suggest to you that's exactly the same in triathlon. Because you start off at a fast stroke rate and it will happen whatever you want. You will start off at a faster stroke rate. And it's hugely important that you can have that stroke rate and then calm yourself down to the stroke rate you want for your normal swim. Then towards the end, Likely as not, you're going to up your stroke rate again and start kicking so you get blood trunked down to those legs so you can get up and run into transition, into T1. Now, I would suggest the stroke rate to aim for would be something in the region of 65 to 85 strokes a minute. That would probably be ideal for most triathletes. Now, we saw there that most of those individual swimmers in one event were doing stroke rates much higher than that. But we have to remember that they're not actually getting then out the water and running into transition to do a bike and then a run. So you do have to be sensible when you're doing it, but you may actually save energy and increase your speed by reducing your stroke length and increasing your stroke rate. And the time to practice that is right now before the season starts, because it's going to start soon. So you need to get in the water, 
get a tempo trainer so you can work that stroke rate and slowly but surely experiment and see what is exactly best for you. If you don't play with your stroke rate, you're actually missing out a part of your training that actually may be one of the most beneficial things you can potentially do. OK, hopefully that's given you food for thought. Not One thing is not right for everybody, and therefore you have to mess about and play and experiment to find exactly what's right for you. Let's hope you do that. All right, hopefully you've enjoyed that and it's been helpful. See you soon.